Now we're going to look at the second part, part B of this problem. Um, we calculated the megahertz frequency uh, as asked for in part A. Now we're going to calculate energy using frequency um, and we're going to convert that to picojoules. It's not going to come out in picojoules at first um, because of our equation that we have for that we learned was energy of a photon is equivalent to we had a Planck's constant which is represented by the letter H times the frequency um, and we also learned uh, you had another formula just basically substitution um, you could also have E equals HC over lambda like that um, <coughs> and you can solve it either way uh, we may do both so I don't know but um, let's just say that we kept this frequency in Hertz from from previous answer before we divided by 10 to the 6 to get our megahertz um, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds so joule times second and remember that frequency in Hertz is also uh, inverse seconds so um, that's why I said we you know we'll keep that number for later um, so our energy would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds times our frequency of 4.740 times 10 to the 14th sorry about that um, <clears throat> times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds so that's going to take care of our seconds right away seconds and inverse seconds are going to cancel out um, and then all you have to do uh, from there is Type in your Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. Multiply that by your frequency, 4.740. And that was to the 14th power. You multiply that and you get 3.141 times 10 to the minus 19 joules so 3.141 times 10 to the minus 19 joules but that's not your final answer because you have to convert that to pico joules so pico is 1 times 10 to the minus 12 so they're 1 times 10 to the minus 12 joules in a picojoule. So all you're going to do now is take your previous answer, divide that by 1 times 10 to the negative 12. Essentially going to move that around. And now you have 3.141 times 10 to the minus 7. Joules. Now, uh, you had a bonus question. Um, what specific type or color of radiation is this? So that was a clue um, part of it there. And what you're going to do to find that is you're going to look at your wavelength um, that you had, and you had a color wheel um, that you uh, were using for. Uh, one of your labs at this time when we did the first absorption spectroscopy lab um, so whichever um, I might give you another bonus question or another maybe an actual question that counts um, where you have to use your color wheel and its wavelength um, in your book you had the 
uh, wavelengths um, for color and you of course had your color wheel um, that you used so uh, that would be very very important if you if I put a question like that on there it'd be very helpful to have that color wheel so I'm gonna make a little note right there for you color wheel with wavelengths and I might pick a particular wavelength for you um, you know that you could you know maybe you, if I make it a bonus and then maybe it's a bonus point but otherwise it's it should be fair game as a regular question uh, after this uh, video has been made now to make you aware of it um, you know but looking at your wavelengths and trying to figure out what color it is or what type if it's you know not a color maybe if it's x-ray or something like that um, but I think I'm going to stick with a color like a you know a visible light color like Roy G Biv or something like that um, for the one way you could tell is you could look at your wavelength of light um, and then determine what that might be in some other unit um, uh, let's see well, maybe I'll just go ahead and I'll work this one for you and show you what color it would come out to be and then you'll have an example how about that so um, hold on just one second let me pull up the color wheel and we'll do a calculation and and I'll show you how it works